I'm a 28-year-old woman, and I can't believe how blind I was. The names in this story are changed, but the ages are accurate. This is a trigger warning for infidelity. My ex-fiancé, Brad, 31, cheated on me with my ex-best friend, Andrea, 27, for months. Brad lost his job during COVID, and the betrayal came to light after that. I moved out the day after I found out and went back to live with my parents and brother, who are all aware now. My dad handled the news better than expected, and I'll share more on that soon, but I need to focus on Andrea's betrayal. Andrea always wanted Brad, and once I started dating him, she pursued him aggressively. Her obsession grew when Brad rejected her, and things escalated after I moved in with him following our engagement. Andrea and I used to share an apartment, and once I left, she started living alone. As more details surfaced about their affair, I became increasingly disgusted. One of our mutual friends, Beth, brought up that Andrea had confided in her months ago about seeing a guy who was engaged. Beth had no idea it was Brad. What disgusts me the most is something Andrea did. Beth told me that Andrea once made Brad have unprotected sex with her, refused to let him wash up, and then sent him straight home to me, where I was working from home due to COVID. Brad demanded oral sex from me immediately upon walking in, which I thought was odd, but I complied. Andrea later confirmed this to Beth, laughing as she said she wanted me to taste her on him. I feel so dirty and betrayed. Edit. Thank you to everyone who reassured me that I wasn't an idiot for not seeing this sooner. Many have suggested going scorched earth on them, especially Andrea. While part of me agrees, I'm very non-confrontational and have always believed that good things happen to good people. Even now, as I burn with anger, part of me wants to hold back. However, I don't want to let them go unpunished, and I think I've finally found my voice. After discovering Brad and Andrea's affair, Brad left our apartment to go to her place. I was devastated, crying and cursing my life while drowning in takeout. Thankfully, my friend Madison showed up with a few other women to support me. They helped pack my things while I slept, and when Brad tried to come back to the apartment multiple times, they made sure he didn't get in, except to retrieve his work laptop. After learning more details from Beth, I threw up from disgust and realized I couldn't stay there anymore. I messaged Brad that it was over and left for Madison's place. The next day, I flew home. Telling my dad was tough, but he took it better than expected, though he did yell at Brad over the phone for 20 minutes. We decided that both Andrea's and Brad's families needed to know everything, so we told them. Andrea's family was devastated, especially her mom and sister, who had no idea. Brad's mom was equally shocked and apologized repeatedly, while his sister said she was ashamed of him. I got tested for SDIs and thankfully, I'm negative. Andrea's sister even accompanied me to the testing. My dad and I also spoke to a family friend who's a cop, and he mentioned that while assault charges would be hard to pursue due to the circumstantial evidence, a good lawyer might make a case. I'm still undecided about taking legal action, but I do plan to inform their company's HR about the affair. My family has suggested therapy, which I plan to start soon. I'll be moving to my aunt's place, where I'll focus on healing and therapy. I've spoken to my boss, who's been supportive, and I'll be staying close to my family for a while. I know recovery will take time, but being far away from Brad and Andrea is what I need right now. I'm still processing everything that's happened. Brad started cheating on me about a year ago, which is heartbreaking. If only he had been honest or told me things weren't working. When we met, he was so funny.